Hello and welcome to Gerrock Farms. In today's video, my father, he's gonna go over his chainsaw uh, lineup, give you guys a bit of a tour all the way from his old vintage saws up until his, uh, his very new and most recently purchased saw. We'll talk about the old ones first. And this is when I was 14, 15 years old, I was using these. This is what my grandpa bought. And then this is one we ended up getting a little later on. So we'll start with this XL12. I don't really know a lot about it. I haven't had this saw off the shelf in like forever. And I just brought it down yesterday. And you can see everything is sticky on them. I think that's a 16 inch bar, home light. I even for fun named it Gusto. These saws have a oiler button right here. So when you're cutting, you have to remember to be oiling and then the, the heavier it's cutting, the more you oil and you choke and different things. And someday I may polish it all up. I know this one could run again. This is what really made me a chainsaw man. This, this thing here, and I love this wrap around handle. This is a home light zip. And they made these saws, and I had looked this up yesterday from 1958 to 1968. 77 cc's, it's got a lot of torque, which means you can bog it down it don't move as fast and as smooth as the new saws, but you can bog it down and it'll still keep going. It doesn't stall out, but you look at the size of the fuel tank on this thing. And uh, again, you got, a, you got your oil button. You have to keep pushing that as you're going. Um, but I've seen guys restore these and I'm kind of thinking about it. And then I remember my dad coming home with this one. Maybe I was, I don't know, maybe, 17 or so and my brother come to wake me up my dad came home late and he said they had this saw a home light zip like brand new they got it from a dealer that sold new saws but somebody traded it next morning i woke up and i thought i just dripped that and it was there down on the tool bench we got 18 inch bar 404 chain they always had these big wide noses again too this is i think what they originally came with this one stopped for me and I believe it's the magneto, which makes the spark. I'm really tempted to tear them apart and see if I can get that going. But those guys made me a chainsaw guy. So then using that, then I started getting into, into newer saws. Now, I wanna talk about this table that I had got here. After having a lot of saws, I, um, I decided we had to figure out a good way to store these things up so they don't take up a lot of space. So they store nice. So you'll see that as we go along here, but we're gonna talk about all the other saws I got and then we'll see how this table is coming together. Now 193, this is one of the smaller ones that Steel makes. I got a carving bar on there, a cannon carver. I figured something out here. With all my saws, they got different color handles, which means whether they're industrial or residential. This here would be more of a tree trimmer saw. And I think it comes with a top handle design too where you just use it for one hand. Not gonna go on a lot about it. Not my favorite saw, but these here, the 201s, I got two of them. Now again, this is a professional tree trimming saw. Again, the white handle. And what I like is this saw is your hands are further apart, good control but a lot of suspension in your handlebar besides. I call these the mini, the Rollomatic mini. And the, the bar and chain is very skinny. It's a 3H chain. And again, I bought two because when I do carving shows, I don't have to stop to sharpen or fuel. So I bought two of them. And an interesting thing is, is the value of these saws versus saws that are similar. Now you get into your, your 180s. Kind of the next step up. This is a homeowner saw. Notice black handle again. Different color handle. So that, but they're actually pretty tough. The piston runs the other way in this one versus this one. And I even had tore apart to see exactly what that's all about. But I got my steel carving bar in there. Dime tip, they call it. And then here's an identical saw again. Um, same thing, mini bar, same 16 inch with the, um, with the 3H chain on. And you can see how my table's coming together there. How 
that works. And then I stepped up in the world and I went to these 250s. And they came with 325 chains, just a little larger chain, more of what they call a stock bar. Anyway, so I had to change the sprocket to match the chain. 325 is, all it is is your, your chain is a little bit, the rivets are closer together. And again, this is a little more power. And what happens when I carve a lot or cut a lot with this one, it, you end up breaking the chain because you got so much power for the type of chain. But, and this is a, an identical saw again. Lotus black handle. There. And then we'll get into this one. Now this is one of the second steels I bought, new. And 20 inch bar, 3 8 chain. Um, I would recommend this to be your average to larger wood cutting saw. 360. Pro. It's enough to hold on to. Now this. This here is my first steel chainsaw that I bought. I still remember what we paid for it. $635 back in uh, June of 93. And this thing has cut more wood than anything I got. 38 Magnum 2. And it's, they, they claim they built this saw for the Christmas tree farmer. There's a lot more iron in this saw than there was in the ones that were built at that time. It made for getting down in the dirt a little bit more and wears better and stuff. But it's awfully heavy. 14.8 pounds. It's a heavy saw for what it is. And this is my best tree falling saw, but it's really getting wore out. If I could find one that looks good. I mean, I've replaced different stuff on here. They, they always try to talk me into buying a new saw. I said, well, kind of like a lot of old stuff. They just don't make them like that anymore. So you try to fix the old ones as best you can. And then here's one I bought used. The old 66 and anything with the old first is kind of like back in the 90s saws. I don't know when they switched them over to the other numbers, but they got a lot more torque on the low end. So between you know the stuff that was built in the 90s these other saws got a lot more speed, and they're not so they're not so strong, but they're a lot smoother and they're more friendly to use. 3H chain. This is a great saw for blocking and dropping trees. These two right here for the real serious, you know, cutting stuff. And then we get the 660. It's just a newer version of the old 66. So basically the O was on the other side, um, smooth. But again, 3 8 I got a 24 inch bar on there, but it's kind of the one I always go for now for a lot of stuff when it comes to the big cutting, being that it's a little newer and a little smoother to use. Now I got this guy, the 880. A lot of guys try to talk me out of buying you go to your dealer that knows you well, and he's like, well, you don't need that. There's nothing big enough around here for that. And he's kind of right. You got 404 chain on there. I think this is a 25 inch bar. It came with that. I didn't even have to special order it because somebody else did, and I think they ran out of money, and then they sold it to me instead. This saw takes a lot to hold on to. I'm gonna start it here just because. saw is doing this in your arms so I rarely use it we've had it where we had the really big grandfather trees that are like three feet across that big huge trunk that you can't get up blocks up on a splitter so we're cutting them blocks and we're ripping them every direction we're basically cutting this whole trunk into cubes and this is a saw for stuff like that I don't use it nearly as much as, as the other ones so that's the chainsaw rack, and you can see why I needed a chainsaw rack. So these are walnut, there were some ugly pieces of a walnut tree, and then I, I put these pegs down through. I didn't want to put any nails or anything in there because I knew I was going to be slicing holes through for the, for the bars, and I didn't want to have those interfere with that. But it's a great idea to try to 
keep your stuff organized so you can find it and keeps them all up out of the moisture and everything. And, and, uh, so now the 180s, you got kind of a different system for tightening the chain. We loosen that and then you turn this little dial. And again, no, you have to have a wrench with you. When I bought this saw, I was really kind of concerned about the durability of it. But they're actually pretty tough, amazingly enough. Even these bars, these thin little bars, I do a lot of plunge cuts with them, and they, they really hold up. I mean, for what we do with them anyway, they do go bad eventually. But now they're, you know, 250. They got the bolts on the side again and the screw tightener there. Something a little different again. These tree trimming saws, now they only got one bolt on there. Just kind of to illustrate the quality of these saws, these two, they were 600 and some dollars a piece. You know, and I thought, awfully expensive, but they'll hold their value simply because they're, they're brand and then they're, they're professional saws. Now you get into these 180s, well, they may be a little higher now, but they were like 250 bucks a piece. That was quite a bit of difference. So you start thinking about it, you could go through two of these for one of those and, and then some. So it kind of makes it okay, but yet I haven't killed any of them yet. But part of the reason is when you got so many saws, you never, just like anything, you don't put so much stress on one. You spread out your, so what we do is you sharpen up a bunch of them, you fuel them up and you take them with you wherever you're going and you don't have to stop. And, String comes out of one, you grab the other. If one hits a nail, you grab the other, and pretty soon you're, you can make a full day before you have to actually stop and uh, do your fixing up in the woods. It's so much easier down here. So I hope you guys learned a little something. I know my dad's got a heck of a collection compared to most people that own chainsaws. So that's his uh, saw lineup. And that's a bit of a backstory on why he purchased each and every saw. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.